let us just see if we can correct that. Um, okay, is that working? Are we getting pictures now? Are we getting pictures? Are we getting sound? Thumbs up if we're, if we're getting if we're getting pictures and sound. And I'm so sorry. You know what? I'll tell. I'll explain to you a little bit later what we did <laughs> because it's pretty stupid. Um, but it's schoolboy error. Uh, let me just open up the. Um, the video in the chat let me just uh, so i can see you all hello everybody now you've probably got video now you didn't have video before so uh who's in ah it's, it is lovely to see you people hi keith hubert how are you leslie i'm glad i got to to get the video working okay look my, my error my, mine and michelle's error anyway we do everything together as you, as you guys know um we forgot to plug the camera in which has the microphone and the uh the sound so we're all sat out here in the garden all going everything seemed good hit the go button <laughs> i'm doing well byron how are you hi greg um mrt grizzly aloha aloha should have worn my hawaiian shirt uh, Leslie says, uh, Critity says hi. Hi, Leslie. <laughs> Elizabeth, Keith. Now, you you will have seen that the, the title changed, the thumbnail changed. I got in a bit of trouble. Let me explain. I don't know if any of you saw. Um, we put up a thumbnail for this. We were testing different coffee shops that we've downloaded as we traveled around the world. And I found this one that this guy gave Michelle and I when we were in, was it in Thailand somewhere? Yeah. Um, it was a, he bought the coffees over to us. We were sat out in the garden. It was kind of funny. We just sat, it was a random coffee shop. And um, he turned up and he put a coffee in front of me and a coffee in front of Michelle. And my one had this uh, sort of topless lady on it with the sort of um, uh, in latte art. You know, it was just done in very simple lines. And we were just testing the thumbnails. I didn't realize they were going live on, on the channel. Um, uh, I didn't realize you guys even saw the thumbnails. I, I don't really fully understand how this um, live streaming works. Anyway, so we were testing different thumbnails. Within maybe a minute, 30 seconds of saving that, I got a lady coming on to my channel and Michelle said to me, oh, somebody's calling us, excuse me if anyone's watching this gets offended, but you know, somebody's calling us pigs. Um, and it's just a little bit, it knocks the stuffing out of you a little bit. So she'd, she'd come on to one of my videos and said we were pigs because we put it up and she was offended by it. And it, it, it perplexes me because we, we don't have a lot of hate or, or, or unpleasantness on the channel. So sorry if I'm, I'm not my usual sort of upbeat self today a little bit. We don't have a, a lot of uh, negativity on the channel and I just kind of knocked us a little bit because so yeah they got their they got their point across and and said it but you know people out there know us if you if you're going to come on and and just say to us oh that's not appropriate don't like that we listen we're happy to but it was um it was the way within such a short moment and and she's actually got a um her own i won't mention this lady because it's not not fair of me to do so but she's got her own youtube channel and i went and had a little look and she's probably watching this but i went and i thought wow she looks quite pleasant i don't know why she's so angry now we are not a very prudish couple right we don't live in a bubble we don't mind we were you can't there's, there is too much hate in the world, you know. You can't live in a world where anything that offends you, you, you allow it to, um, to, to to dictate where you go in life. You can't do that. You know, Michelle and I, we were, we, were, we were driving through, it was in Chiang Mai, actually, I remember now. We were driving through the streets of Chiang Mai looking for interesting coffee places and we found a guy who, who roasted his own coffee. He was very passionate about his coffee and... and for giggles he came out with these two coffees we didn't ask him to put the art on and we thought it was funny now i would say to this lady if you find that sort of stuff in public offensive i'm sorry but you are just never ever 
ever going to be able to travel anywhere in the world ever because you can't take offense at other people's humor and you can't there, there are limitations all right but we have to sort of draw the line in, in life you, you you can't tell people how to behave it, it's it's hard for me I, I i see a lot of things when i travel if i got offended by every single thing i'd never go anywhere and michelle and i as you know we travel a great deal so i was a little taken back because you know this is basically calling us pigs for putting up a thumbnail of a coffee cup where the guy had done this art on top and he's calling michelle a pig and and, and i find that really shocking because you know she's called called me over and said oh what about this and i said oh man we, we, that's just anyway so it made me feel a little bit um <laughs> a, a little bit irate and they may feel that's that's a win for them but it isn't a win for them it's it's a great sadness because you've you've got to be more tolerant in life of people everybody we've got to be more tolerant of of different people and different ways and different cultures you know and 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 be understanding also of other people's um, um, ways of life that's important but you can't get uh, like that I, I am sorry we had a fun afternoon at that coffee shop Guy well, was very pleasant. <laughs> the guy was very funny, and I'm very sorry if that offended anybody. It does. It is important for us not to offend people. Um, I guess we're broader shouldered than than we give ourselves credit for sometimes, and we don't get offended. So, so anyway, David. Good morning from Britain. So life is too short, Angel. It is too short, and it is actually so exciting, such good fun. Guten um, Morgen, David Byron. Um, Greg, Greg I, maybe it, it was, she should have actually just possibly come in and said, look, I don't like that, please don't use that thumbnail, and we would have taken that uh, to heart immediately. Um, uh, but no, you don't call people pigs at the drop of a hat. You don't come on and write such aggressive nastiness. And the lady's website and her name, her full name is all there. If I wanted to, you know, I, we could, we could, end up in this ridiculous bickering and it's not going to happen because we, we don't uh, we don't follow those paths anyway so so the title keeps changing because we're not sure it's, it's it, you see how dull it is today I probably still looks right I see Charlie down there that's Charlie he's a he's a, a cocker spaniel and he's an elderly gentleman but he's he's got the heart of a of, of a of a four-year-old who drinks coffee? Steven so who coffee. drinks coffee? I drink coffee. I don't drink a lot of coffee. When I was younger, I used to drink. I don't know if, 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 if you are coffee drinkers out there and you drink loads of coffee. I know some people have dozens a day, but I do love my coffee. I can't really start the day without a cup of coffee, uh, but I do only drink two cups a day now. And, and um, uh, so... And I think when I was younger, I probably sort of drunk five or six, maybe even more at, at one time. But I've, I've cut it right back because I, I understand caffeine is not good. I actually don't encourage my children to drink coffee. Um, we've never given them coffee or tea as children. Greg Wade says coffee by IV. <laughs> yeah, that's... Greg, that's... Uh, that is the thing. Coffee can become super, super, um, super dependent. But I, I am a bit of a coffee snob. Am I coffee snob, Michelle? You like your good coffee. Yeah, yeah. I, I have, uh, but you see, I'm, 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 I'm understanding enough to know that everyone likes their coffee a different way. See, if you, if you go to, uh, we lived many years in France, and, and they drink a very dark roast coffee there. I, it's not a coffee I particularly like, but when we were there, yeah, I will, ig I will ignore it. it. Did it did hit me a little bit, and if that's what she she was a. Uh, hoping to achieve then then good for her but in reality you know she 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 hurts herself um by by showing her um anyway i'm gonna leave that let's move on coffee <laughs> um i've always 
at one time I was I was uh, almost uh, running a business doing coffee. Uh, we we were talking with a, a company about uh, roasting beans. I've also got a friend in Sri Lanka actually uh, who who grows coffee beans. Sri Lanka is famous for for tea. Everyone will have heard of Ceylon tea and uh, um, Keith. Excellent benefits from fresh coffee antioxidants. Yeah, that's why I look so gorgeous, Keith. That and the wine. Um, Caleb, uh, you gave up. Uh, that's you gave four, and then went cold turkey. So is that four a day, and then cold, cold turkey is hard, Caleb. You know, a coffee is is an, an, an addiction. There was a wicked thing um, we used to do. No, I didn't used to do it because I'm not wicked, as you know. <laughs> but there was a wicked thing that used to happen in our office many years ago. Um, one of the girls came in and she changed all the coffee in the coffee jars to decaffeinated. So she emptied out the the Nescafe coffee and she put in decaffeinated, and. Hey Johnny, how are you? Johnny's uh, in from Thailand. So she emptied out. I'm good, Johnny. Very good man. Back in Oz. So she emptied out, but but decaffeinated into the coffee. And about two days later, all the all the staff in the office were going down with these terrible headaches. And they're also saying, "Oh, I've got a terrible headache. I'm not sure why." And it was because some prankster had swapped the coffee over isn't that wicked but it does have that effect if you uh, we actually where did we we were in the netherlands and we bought coffee oh we were in holland some years back and we went and bought coffee and we couldn't read the jars now byron you might be able to help me i can't i can speak a bit of german but not that much dutch so we bought a jar of coffee and we we didn't realize it was decaffeinated and and after two days we, we both had these sort of like splitting migraines and uh, suddenly it it dawned on us that we were drinking decaffeinated coffee and went out and got regular coffee and straight away the headaches went so it isn't good for you and that's why i don't encourage people to drink coffee as youngsters yeah it's a nasty trick caleb uh, I, I some years ago now probably back in the 90s yeah so don't take that as an idea if you're working in an office office don't um johnny is there something happening is a fantastic channel on uh, oh, uh he's in thailand johnny we met him when we were in uh hui hawa hin is that right johnny Hu hui hawa hawa hin anyway we, we we met it when we were pronouncing um thai town names incorrectly and johnny is a lovely guy check him out johnny is there something happening in thailand a lot of fun great guy as well and he a fellow was cheers johnny so yeah, that that um, that that's that's hit me twice now. Where you so you so actually when I started um, cutting down my coffee to to two, I did used to get. I don't drink coffee in the afternoons now. He says, looking at the clock, it's two. <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, I don't drink coffee in the afternoon. It's now two forty eight. I'm occasion. drinking coffee special occasion. I couldn't really talk about it and not have one. The strawberries. I drink three coffees. I'm twenty two. Okay. Critter tea has three pots a day. Three pots, Leslie. Whoa. David. Martin. I hope you share those pots. What's David got on, David? He has seven a day. Seven, David. You're like I, I was. Uh, das los, mein Freund. Danke schön. <laughs> and Greg adds, adds rum once in a while. Trinken Sie uh, Café, Byron. Ich habe ein Tasse Café. I've got to be careful. I mix up my my German, my French, um, and everything else. Uh, ich, uh, nein. What is ich liebe Kaffee? Ich, um, no. What's the what's the word for just I like, not love? So, um, strawberry says. What about soda has caffeine? So, oh yeah, like uh, yeah. You can. A lot of people drink. Oh man, that's and that's even a worse. Um, I, I got so many friends that that have uh, caffeine um addictions with with sodas and that is pretty wicked stuff as well we should just drink water actually when i'm not drinking coffee i drink google plug oh, it's a google plug how can you plug google i mean it's like omnipresent i drink um do you want to know why that's <laughs> i'll tell you the story why that this is around my coffee no around your water around my water so this is one of those clips that you can put around your your 
your ankles to keep your, your your trousers from the chains you know so it sort of goes around so got it from google somewhere and maybe in malaysia anyway i'll tell you in a minute let's just have a quick look ich liebe dich means i love you enjoy it does it does so um so i'm drinking a lot more water and these are great little what are they made? These are Contigo. These are the, you, you've got a little trigger here. So if you tip it to the side, no water will come out. But if you squeeze this little trigger, so I try to keep this near me all day long, a little bit like my guitar. Always keep it near you so that you use it. Keep your water near you so you use it. Um, and it's blue and Michelle's got a green one. So we went to visit my mother and she said, oh, that's a good idea. And so she went out and bought one herself and she bought a blue one <laughs> exactly the same so now we've got two of them in the house while i'm staying with her and i she said oh i'm sorry did i did, should i have got a, a a blue one and i said well you know it's going to be hard now to spot which ones is which so i put this round it that's why that is round no it's not not vodka or gmt no it's not vodka johnny it's it's not vodka <laughs> A little bit of brandy and coffee is quite nice, isn't it? A bit of Irish coffee, a little bit of whiskey and coffee, should I say. So, um, where was I? I'm like a, yeah, I'm in the garden. Thank you for that, Michelle. Sorry. She just reminded me where I am. A tempura recipe from Japan. Thank you, Byron. I will. I've got so much to do. What did we think of today that we were talking about? Somebody had said something to me. It's an Italian. We were talking about Italian recipes and, and we do. We are planning, as I think I've said to you all, we're, we're planning a Mexican series. We just got to get Halloween out of the way. If anyone's going to be offended, by the way, and get angry with me, you might be offended over the next five recipes that I'm going to do, which are pretty disgusting and actually called disgusting in the look at that air quotes. How trendy am I? Air quotes. <laughs> I've cheered up a little bit. Anyway, I was feeling a bit glum earlier on. So yeah, we've got these uh, pretty disgusting recipes. Actually, could you go and get my um, Shrek ears? Yeah, Shrek ears. I've been I've I've I've, made, I've been making modelling chocolate. I love modelling chocolate. I don't know if any of you have um, ever made your own modelling chocolate. I do have a recipe, and I think I'm going to do another recipe, an updated version of it. Halloween is fun, Greg. It is fun. And um, so, yeah, I am cheering up a little bit. I was feeling pretty, pretty glum. So I've been making some modeling chocolate. They're not staged yet. <laughs> no, they're not staged, but hang on. Wow. So I've been doing these Shrek ears. And they're for a recipe. They're nothing. They're not actually related to the recipe. They're just props. So that's one of Shrek's ears. Why am I showing you this nonsense? But look at this. Shrek's nose. <laughs> that's why Halloween's a lot of fun. Because you get to do stupid things that you would never yeah. normally do. So I've got um, two Shrek ears and a Shrek nose that are part of, um, part of something that I'm doing on the channel in the next week. Mm. But modeling chocolate's lovely. You know, if you model with, um, if you're making cakes and you model with um, uh, oh, <laughs> I'm terrible. My, my mind is like a, like a vacant sort of box shaking around. So Michelle shouts out fondant. <laughs> Otherwise I'd never, I'd never remember. When you're modeling with fondant, it often gets a little bit crumbly and breaks. And if you try to do anything intricate or detail, it breaks apart. So a little tip. If you're actually making cake decorating, use modeling chocolate. If you're doing like details, even actually if you're doing little balls and things around the outside of a cake, use modeling chocolate because it tastes so good because it's pretty much um, pure white chocolate. It's not real uh, chocolate, but it's uh, pure white chocolate. Mm, I've got a, I got a modeling chocolate on my fingers, excuse me. But Luke says, hi Steve, I was the guy who asked about shark meat. Can you make a dish using shark meat? Luke, um, th thank you and welcome. Uh, yeah, I, 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 shark meat 
is um, controversial a little bit. It's actually, I mean, shark fin is controversial. I've done a few posts about this before, and I'm very, 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 very anti the shark finning uh, industry. But shark meat is actually really, nice. really nice meat. We've had it quite a few times. And, um, you know, if you're actually catching shark uh, like you would um, any other large fish, uh, and you doing it in a sustainable way, shark meat is good. But what's your fascination with with shark meat particularly? I, I'm not sure. Um, maybe you could explain to me or drop me a, a message and you can explain if you want in a longer term. So, and some others, Michelle? Um, I'm missing so many comments. Ruby says, why are you showing us that nonsense? Because you made it and you love it making it. Nothing wrong with that, Steve. No, that nonsense is, is what I do love. Uh, t t <laughs> but the actual, they're just props. The, the recipe I'm making is quite disgusting. So uh, we've got a little series of the five most disgusting Halloween recipes coming up. Please don't take offense. If you don't want to watch it, you're welcome not to. They are pretty gross, but um, they're a bit of fun because Halloween should be about fun. Dia de Morte in Mexico, in, in many um, parts of the world, this is a time to sort of celebrate and enjoy. And, 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 and don't forget Halloween comes from a tradition of celebrating uh, this time of year, remembering family and baking things for people that have passed. So, uh, Greg loved the Cornish pasties. Yes, oh, I love Cornish pasties. Very simple to make a Cornish pasty. Uh, the, the, the trick to decent pasties is the seasoning. Uh, salt and black pepper. Um, you're using your Swedes and your hard uh, um, vegetables in there. I've got a, a a recipe i'll get michelle to pop it in the comments there it's for cornish pasties if you want i do get some people come on and tell me i'm doing it wrong because i should crimp it on the side or i should crimp it along the top it's not about wrong or right it's just about having some fun you know getting people to to um uh to, to a consomme can i do a consomme i videoed a consomme but we never put it up did we you made it for something else wasn't it you were clear in stock um w johnny yes i i i've actually filmed making consomme some about a couple of years ago i think i was making a um a something it possibly might have even been a christmas ham and we were making the consomme and I was I was filming it. It's quite a long and lengthy process and I was showing how to make a raft and, and, and clarify a consomme. But um, it's one of those things, it's on it's on a list, an increasingly long list uh, of, of things that I've done. And actually I have filmed the consomme, but the problem was it, it wasn't filmed. These were the early days, Johnny, and it wasn't, um, I hadn't got the cameras right. I think I was still doing it all on a tripod and I missed uh, I missed the opportunity. And it's a shame because it was a massive film because I was doing the whole process uh, of, of producing a proper consomme. Um, funny you should mention that. I, I'd forgotten, I'd forgotten. Um, we talked about soups as well, haven't we? Chicken soup. And yeah, and ch meat. we've got to do a, a soup series. Oh my, my Lord, we have so many things. Hardest dish in the world, not not so hard. Hard. Um, it takes time, Johnny. It's just a little time consuming. I think people are, are often put off because it's so easy to cheat um, and do it uh, the uh, simple ways. You know, there are ways of making consommes that are not really. Um, um, uh, and what what's the French for consommé? Is it? It is consommé. No, but what what's the tra tra direct translation? Do you remember? No. No. I'm just trying to try to, to to check. Um, so we will do it. Would I include aspect in a consommé? No, I wouldn't. No. Uh, we use uh, egg to clarify the uh, the stocks when we're making a consommé. It's not so difficult as. It looks if you've made a nice stock and you want to clarify it um, it's it's not that simple it's not that complicated if you've got a lot of um, of, of uh, matter in the stock uh, you can break eggs into it and 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 bind the, the eggs will bind um, the solids together they'll float to the top of your pot like a raft they make a raft you then cut a hole in the top of that almost as if you were fishing in a, in, in an ice Pond, and you start drawing out um, with a ladle all of the um, 
the liquid and pouring it on top of the raft as as that settles down the the the, the consomme will will clarify beautifully i mean almost almost as uh, to crystal clear but it takes time but it's fun it's actually fun to do i i quite enjoy when we're doing a lot of cooking we 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 will put that on we'll be doing other things you know you don't have to it might take several hours to do but uh, if i decide to reduce it down i actually took a stock once a big um 24 liter uh, pan of stock and we boiled it down to it was almost like uh, stock cubes um, it's time consuming and actually that's that's a good thing to do if you have a, a an arger or a, an open fire where you can pop it on top and let that burn down over time so Johnny I'll, I'll try I'll, I'll make a little note uh, to, to look at doing but I'm gonna have to be in the right place and, and have the right equipment so is there any other questions there Michelle I've got a I'm just reading coffee right I'll, let me just get into coffee with you guys so there are some coffee drinkers in the audience um, I'm thinking of doing well no I'm not thinking of doing we've been planning a series for a little while of doing coffee reviews but what I'm hoping to do is actually um, do uh, an interview with other YouTubers so I might bring I keep saying I might we, we will bring on YouTubers uh, friends of ours or and people we meet while we travel for instance Johnny Johnny would be a good example so Johnny I might say to you do you want to come on to the channel and, and do a little table talk with me and what we'll do is have a, a little interview with Johnny and and I bake something for him so Johnny if you tell me you like a caramel slice or something like that yeah, don't go too fancy on me make it too difficult or some French macaron um, I'd bake that for you as part of a series and then you come on we do a little interview with you and we would talk coffee and I'd serve you with something so that's nice isn't it Johnny <laughs> you, you get a you get a treat we get and discuss but w while we're doing it we're going to review different coffees so 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 I'm, I'm thinking of this series um, it might be just a sort of monthly thing or a bi-monthly thing. I'm not sure how it will work because it will depend on getting enough people organized. Uh, I've, I've sorted out um, uh, a lot of the technicalities. We've done some sort of pre-production on that, haven't we, Michelle? Yes, Stephen. Done a lot of pre-production. pre-production. Yeah. Um, so um, so we, we, I think it might be fun. It might be fun to get some, uh, some other youtubers particularly one say i'm in melbourne at the moment there's quite a few fantastic youtubers here in melbourne i could get them over to our place and uh, or go over to their place and we will review a coffee and chat i'll interview them and ask them some questions about themselves so i might say to johnny johnny where are you from and johnny might say he's from uh brisbane up in uh, up in queensland but he might not be saying the truth because he might be from new zealand <laughs> <laughs> he might be a kiwi so we get that sort of stuff out of them. You want some hash cookies? Hash cookies. Okay, man. Yeah, that could be sorted. You you mean um, McDonald's hash, right? Like hash browns. A uh, bit of sugar in them. Bake them up with some flour. Squeeze all the grease out, Johnny. You're sorted. So that's a, a reason I, I was. I, do you think that's a good idea? Do a sort of coffee uh, a chat with other youtubers make them nice coffee we maybe bring in um some of the famous brands of coffee that are available around the world and actually uh, from a coffee snob's point of view but also from another person's point of view um talk about the flavors so we could bring for instance let's say we went to um, starbucks and got their house blend coffee and, and ground it up made fresh shots of espresso Dis described how they taste a little bit like Keith, Keith and I would talk about wine and um, and then maybe make a, a milk drink like a cappuccino or something like that so that's that's what I'm thinking I hope you think that's a good idea it's it's in the pipeline as is uh, as are many things uh, they say the best coffees are French German Japanese Castellana Spanish mm -hmm. kind of now <laughs> you cut the Byron, that's very broad. <laughs> they are very, 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 very different from place to place. You've actually mentioned some places there that have very starkly different coffees. The French like their coffees roasted to win within 
inch of its life so the little beans are sweating the little sweat glands they're all sort of oily and that makes quite a bitter coffee now a lot of my so i hope your apologies to my french uh, friends and, and family if that's uh, not their interpretation but that is often why they like a lot of sugar in their coffee as do the vietnamese by the way uh, just saw your comment there greg so uh, because when you have such a bitter roast you have to sweeten it otherwise it it's it's sour and bitter um uh, the germans have a a, a different look uh, outlook on their coffee they go for the much sort of robuster sort of softer not robusta coffees but the um, softer flavors and the creamier sort of flavors so um, uh, m closer to to what I like um, in the US I think they ha they're, they're sort of tending towards those uh, French roasts here in in Melbourne for instance we tend to go with the much lighter to medium roast coffees so there's not a lot of bitterness so coffee that's not got sugar in it tastes really good um, and, and it's easier again that's opinion Uh, who's that? Richard. Hi, Richard. Good day or night from Las Vegas. Yeah, love and peace to everybody. Peace to everybody. It's 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 such. You know, we're all on a journey in life, and I can get philosoph philosoph philosophical, even if I can't say it. And um, it's important to enjoy life and and just to be as good. And you know. Um, as I was saying earlier on in, in this chat, if, if you haven't seen it, watch watch this video from the beginning, you'll understand why I was a little bit miffed at the beginning and why I kept changing um, changing things, changing thumbnails, changing titles. Um, yeah, so what's that, what's, um, what's that Byron? Spain uses cast Castilian, Castellan, while Mexico uses Latin America, American. I'm not sure I understand that, Byron. Do you understand yeah, that? Talking about coffee, I, I probably missed the, 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 the lead up to that. <laughs> Is Ruby's in? I, see, I saw Ruby. Hello, Ruby. Did I say hello? Vigne, Vigne Kumar. Hi, how are you? Um, so let's just have a quick look down the list and see who, if I've missed saying hello. Anyone else said hello that I've missed? Mm -hmm. So we're going to try and do these every, we're still traveling, so we're going to try and do these every Thursday, these live shows, but it will depend a little bit on the internet. I'm thinking of getting a, a mobile service, but in Australia, the, the mobile services cost an absolute fortune. For example, 130 bucks we're looking at for a sort of service that would give us um, on the fly internet. Oh, sun's coming out. Look at that. Beautiful. I can put these sunnies over the top of these glasses. It's kind of cool. The uh, Greg, you're not American, are you? No, I don't think so. Um, I think because they've they've been used to the uh, the the Americans um, have the pot coffee. Now, when you do uh, pour coffee through. A filter through the beans it will draw a lot of the acidity from the beans through because it's a slow process when you do an espresso shot it's a fast process it pushes through and you just get the oils the dark sweet um, shot of coffee but when you do a, a long uh, a French press for example where you you have it in the glass jug and you let it soak it allows a lot of the tanning to come out Greg's Canadian you're Canadian are you Greg don't you go to calling our cousins Yanks. I'm sure they're probably quite happy with it. Can you see him in the background? Charlie goes nuts. He's, he sort of, he, he loves, he loves, he sort of growls. We went for a lovely walk this morning and he was doing the same thing out in the fields. He's kind of like rolling in the, in the grass and he, he growls. Rah! <laughs> And then he gets up and shakes himself off. He's such a such a character. So, are there any questions? Did I miss anything that I wanted to cover? You've seen my. Um, um, I've announced a little bit the new series we're doing of disgusting Halloween recipes, and they are disgusting, but they're also fun. 
any questions that I've uh, that anybody wants to ask before we sort of um, wrap up today? What's I going to talk about? <laughs> Come and say hello, Michelle. Come around and just give everyone a wave. Oh, Greg lived in Queensland for twenty five years. Oh, twenty five years ago. Sorry, I can't read. <laughs> hello. We lived in Queensland for a while. We lived in Queensland, Greg. We were Queenslanders. A little while for a little while for quite a few years our kids were, were queenslanders for a time see a lot of people say that we've got very british accents which i guess we have because we've we've we originally come from um from uh, england um but we've lived in australia for many years but you don't lose your accents do i like italian coffee i love italian uh, coffee byron uh, i mean uh, the italians make almost as good a coffee as the Australians. <laughs> That's wicked, isn't it? No, no, the Italian coffee, I mean, you can't grumble about Italian coffee when you're there. The espresso shots can be good. I mean, there are places which make awful coffee in every country in the world, but as a rule, you're always going to get good coffee in Italy. The other place where you're always going to get good coffee, and uh, we found, didn't we, was Spain. Mm. I mean, the Spanish coffee, is outstanding even when you're driving in the sort of backs of uh, Spain up in the mountains uh, and you stop at a truck stop they're still making really good coffee which is which is amazing um, no you don't what no I don't what Greg no I don't sound like I'm did I miss that Sorry, Greg. You're, you're going. You're going quick, and I'm. I'm not a quick reader. Um, so, does the difference come in how it's made or where it's grown? What are you talking about? The coffee beans, or are you asking about the coffee green? I, I've got a, a, a an inkling that you're talking about the beans. Somebody said to me the other day. You know, it's um, Hawaii of all places accent so, <laughs> Greg's talking about your accent no you don't I still don't know whether you have an accent or not um, do I sound Aussie g'day mate do I sound Aussie to any of uh, you non Aussies out there I'll answer you in a moment Greg about that now I, some people when I travel abroad they say we sound Australian off the bat um, but when I travel in Australia, they quite often can pick up that we've got um, overseas accents. And yet we've lived here for, for, for many, many years. And uh, uh, you just you just don't lose uh, your accent. I met a lady here in Melbourne who was an American lady from California. And she'd lived here since she was 21, 22. And she must have been in her 60s. And she still had a really thick American accent. So she'd been there since most of her adult life and still had this, this real California droll, which was quite kind of cool. So the coffee taste of beans, it, it, it does vary from country to country, but it really varies from roast to roast. I mean, you can take um, they always say Robusta is the cheaper beans and Arabica are the, 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 the more expensive beans or the better quality beans because there are there are two types of coffee bean aesthetically. There, there are actually more than two types of coffee bean, but there are two um, um, beans that we tend to talk about in the industry. Robusta beans, which are by their name very robust and will grow almost anywhere, and Arabica beans, which are a lot... Um, a lot uh, the plant is is more sensitive to temperatures so it only grows at certain parts and certain altitudes robusta grows like a weed and, and you can grow it anywhere now they always say that the, the arabica bean makes a better coffee it technically you could you could agree, agree with that and there's a lot of people that will only drink arabica it's like a key you know use those quotes again it's one of those sort of um, key words that everybody thinks ah, I like Arabica but actually some of the best coffees are blended coffees where you actually take a, a certain amount of one roast and mix it with another roast or another bean so yes um, you 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 don't have um, you you don't get the variation necessarily just from where they're grown um, you you get it how it's roasted and um, I think I've got a little video on I think if you 
the, the coffee girl yeah, that, yeah? yeah Michelle can share it the, the, there's a, a girl we met in um, Malaysia who was uh, in Penang actually and she was uh, showing us how she roasts the beans in a little roaster they have. Now, the darker you roast those beans will change the, the flavor immensely. I mean, and the lighter you roast them, um, they say, people say to me, the lighter roasts are more bitter. I tend to find the darker roasts are more bitter. So we're looking for, we look for a sort of a, 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 a middle level. It is all in the roast, but it's also in the bean. So it's it's like everything in food. You know, you can say, what does this taste like? If this bean, um, you could take two beans identical and roast them differently, and they would taste a lot, a lot different. Um, but you can also get um, more tannings, more sort of uh, bitterness that comes out of the robusta beans, uh, the cheaper beans. So there's a little, Michelle's just put a little link. It's, don't rush off and watch it now watch it later on uh it's it's uh get yourself a coffee there's a lovely girl we met i forget her name unfortunately but um and she was showing us how she roasts and when you roast the beans you listen for a little crack um when the beans are, are ready and then you decide how long you're going to roast them after that to, to determine whether they're going to be more bitter or not i hope this is interesting i mean it's interesting in my mind but then i'm <laughs> I'm the one that's entertaining myself. Hopefully it's entertaining to you. Um, so, and there are different shapes of beans. You get the pea body, the little um, round pea body. They actually look like, pea, called pea body. They look like little peas, uh, round beans. So it, it's fascinating. We'll actually try to, uh, I'd, I'd like to talk maybe in another episode a bit more about what we plan to do this year. We're hoping to do some really interesting stuff uh, looking at uh, producers and things and I hope you guys um, will like the look at Australia that I promised everybody we're going to do while we're here so it won't uh, you don't get instant gratification unfortunately on the Steve's Kitchen channel because when I talk about things um, it's what we want to do invariably we do do it uh, if you see my my dear friend Anne from Easy Gluten Free where's this coming from <laughs> And from Easy Gluten Free, I said to her one day, oh, we're going to come over and see you in Philadelphia. And she's, you know, we're in Melbourne. She said, no, no, no. She, she About a year later, we turned up on her doorstep. So we do do things almost, if we say we're going to do it, we're going to do it. But it just might take time. So, quit us saying goodnight. Bonne nuit. Schlaf gut, Leslie. Oh, is it goodnight? Be good. Take care. And Greg says you don't sound Aussie, but Keith Cunningham says Aussie definitely. So. Ah, where's Greg? Where's Greg from? From Canada. Canada. Um, yeah. Take us to Alice Springs. I'm gonna take you. I'm gonna take you to Alice Springs, Keith. We're gonna get down there, show you the outback, get some Aussie Tucker. We're gonna get some. Um, yeah, we're going to take you there. We're going to take you to quite a few really nice parts of Australia. You're going to be surprised. I mean, people don't realise just how, how diverse and fascinating Australia is. I and mean, we've got skiing just up the road. There's, there's the Alpen Ranges where you can go... Um, Good night, Keith. Where you can go, uh, go skiing and then you've got the beautiful coastlines around here. Um, it, it's quite amazing. It's a beautiful country and you could to come here for a week or two is just never going to give you justice really. And people that do come and just go to the cities, they, they, you, you, it's nice but you're, you're wasting your time in this, just doing the cities. There's so much to see. I think to come to Australia you've got to give it a few months. Yeah. At the very least. It's so big. Yeah, got to do, do a few months. Anyway, so um, and just like all the countries where you you people live are absolutely wonderful and i don't mean that in a patronizing way i actually mean that i just love traveling and when you come to i haven't been anywhere around the world where i just don't love for one reason or another there isn't anywhere i wouldn't want to go back to because um there's just things that that, that, that are great so who So what's that say? Uh, Greg uh, is a wonderful place and can swing on back again. Oh, he can, he can swing it to get back again to his cows in the bush. 
It is a wonderful place, and there's you know the flora and 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 um, fauna of Australia is is really fascinating. Actually, do, do you want to grab that egg I found? Oh, <laughs> yeah. Any any um, would you call them ornithologists? I mean, I guess it's an ornithologist if you're a bird watcher, but maybe if you if you have an understanding. Now I don't condone taking eggs, by the way, but just today when I walked out uh, with Charlie. This egg was laying. How, be how beautiful is the, the patterning on that? It was just laying. It's, it's I couldn't s on the, on the path. So can you see that? And I was trying to see if I could find the nest. Just whoops, back in focus. So it's tiny. It's it's, it's like a beautiful blue with little brown speckles on it. I've got a feeling it could be. Um, there was no nest nearby. There was nowhere. There was nowhere, and it was on on a concrete path. So it was um, it was going to get crushed. Actually, the dog was about to eat it. And it's a shame I couldn't find um, where to return it. But I wonder if anyone recognises that. Look at the the base. It's got. Can you see that? It's got almost like chocolate. Uh, you probably can't see it. And then it goes round to this beautiful Delft blue. Very pretty. Some of the bird eggs here in Australia are amazing. You know the emu eggs are like this. We've actually um, been to emu farms here. I must take you to an emu farm and show you the emu eggs. They're massive. I believe um, I believe they make quite a decent omelette. And they must be huge. I, I'm not. I couldn't eat an omelette that big. No. <laughs> so yeah, I found that the, the the flora and that's. I see. See, I'm like a squirrel bouncing off all over the place. But um. The flora and fauna here is 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 amazing. The trees, Great the plant sense. life, big bugs, big bugs. I yeah, there was a we were at my my mother's place. I said I went to adjust the um, the heating, and there was a huntsman spider just sat above the dial of the heater, and he's just sort of sat there, you know, like this looking at us. And I didn't notice. I went to turn the the dial, and he just sort of jumped. Like that, because it was quite a small huntsman actually. Yeah. They're harmless. They're pretty harmless. But when I took a photograph, you could see his uh, his four eyes, little round eyes. Sorry if you don't like um, spiders, and I'm putting you off. So that was kind of cool. But our huntsmen here get huge. I mean, they they get the size of dinner plates. Their body is is only about sort of yay big, but they're big and they're hairy. They're not like the little house spiders you get in in uh, Europe and possibly in America there they're big hairy things that could arm wrestle you so I think you know you 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 try to sort of knock them but we you mustn't get rid of huntsmen they're lovely they're lovely creatures and they actually don't really ever cause any human problems um, they're, they're great for keeping down the, the flies and the pests and, and spiders don't trouble me <laughs> but we have a lot of things that will eat and bite you here particularly in the sea Actually, you can't even, where we used to live up in Queensland, you can't even go in the sea in parts of them when the when the, the box of jellyfish are around um, and the sharks. <laughs> There's whole areas. You can't, the saltwater crocodiles are the ones that will get you. But I'll take you around Australia. I'll take you with me. We'll have a look at some of this stuff. And we're actually going to be doing, if we get away with, uh, if we get the planning done right, we're going to be doing some really fascinating episodes to do with uh, culinary things throughout Australia and I'll talk to you about that in a lot more detail in a future in a future chat so I hope you guys like these uh, live shows they seem to be very popular at the moment um, we do get a fall off of subscribers we, we've talked with a lot of youtubers when you do a live show you lose subscribers because I think people see it come in their feed and say oh, I want to unsubscribe um, but in reality it, it, it doesn't affect you know, if, if people want to leave just because you do a live show, then they shouldn't be here in the first place. So it's not a bad thing. Not every dead big killer in the world lives in Australia. <laughs> <laughs> it is true, but uh, the, the you, you might want to Google the, 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 the drop bears, uh, which are killer drop bears, which are here in Australia, which is something that is made up by us Aussies to keep people on their toes. You know, there is a lot of wicked animals over here but they're generally more fr frightened of us than we are of them so that you're not going to get much trouble P possibly the one exception is the crocodile 
if only be going to the water. Yeah, but you know, uh, there, there aren't many animals over here that will, will deliberately try to kill you, um, apart from the crocodile. <laughs> <laughs> crocodile, which will not only deliberately try and kill you, will, will actually eat you as well. Maybe I'll get a crocodile on the show once and one time and he can show us how he prepares a human. <sighs> Australia, Keith, they do. They do. Everything. You might remember my namesake, uh, Steve Irwin. A poor fella. Lovely guy. And when I used to live up in Queensland, we, we, we were near where he used to have his Australia Zoo and, and, and his, his, um, his little girl Bindi still, still runs it, I think, up there, doesn't she? Mm -hmm. And uh, poor Steve, um, man, that guy died in the most uh, inappropriate way. There's a lot of conspiracy theories about it, but, uh, you know, uh, what a lovely guy. What a great character. <laughs> having a frog jump on you in a shower is a shocker yeah I, I guess that would be I'm try, trying to think what what's happened to me over the years I'll save that for another day I'll have to make a little list of things that have happened and probably make a few things up as we tend to do here in Australia <laughs> Australia to, to just to frighten the bejeez out of you we should do a, an episode about different thing different ways we talk in Australia compared to to you guys overseas so you know what a servo is and uh, you know what arvo means because uh, if we if we talked in Oz, Oz talk you probably wouldn't understand a word we were, we were talking about anyway anyway how long have we been on um 54 minutes 54 minutes it's been great having you guys in it's rain. i can feel rain yeah can you feel rain i can feel rain the weather's gorgeous at the moment, but this this uh, this just this day, it's it's got um, a little. Well, it's not cooler, but it's uh, more humid. So I'm gonna I'm gonna end this now. Uh, I want to thank you all for coming in. I want to thank you all for your huge positivity and sharing always uh, my videos on the channel, and it's just a heap of fun. Uh, I want to thank the lady that 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 called us pigs um, for making me aware that some people get offended but also i want to thank her for making me realize i don't really care yeah i, I do care but i but i but i can't live my life for you um i want you all to to just just get on enjoy yourselves be good share the love have a great time keep it positive and we will see you uh what it was tomorrow friday friday That's so we've good. got uh the start tomorrow <laughs> of disgusting Halloween recipes. Yes. You're gonna you're, you're gonna love them or you're gonna hate them. Actually, let me know, love or hate, and I hope you hate them because they are pretty pretty gross. Be good, take care, and we will see you very shortly. Love to you all. I've got to find out how to stop this, which which is always harder than you remember, isn't it? So, no, she's not worth. Uh, why is it always so hard to end a, a live show? Can't they just put put the stop button on the on the video itself? We, you might be here a little while <laughs> longer. Let's go view on the watch page. <laughs> Could be a while. I've done this before. You'd think I'd know twice out, wouldn't you? I can hit stop stream.